Hi guys. Well, here we are again with another episode of me trying to fix my own vehicles. This Cadillac 2011 SRX, this has been a pain in the neck for two or three years. The front brakes seem to be seizing up or getting tight or just not releasing when you're driving on the highway. The brakes will go on and you're driving down the highway and it feels like the engine's trying to work and uh, more power is going in but the vehicle isn't speeding up. And if you look at the little fuel economy needle that's on the dash, you can also tell that you're getting poor fuel economy because the engine is working. So there's a problem. Oh, and if you stop and you get out, you could probably fry eggs on the heat that's coming off both front wheels. So what have I done? I replaced the master cylinder uh, quite a while ago. That's like a year and a half ago. Didn't make any effect at all. I actually replaced that because of low brake pedal. I just couldn't get the brakes bled correctly. There was air in the system someplace. Anyway, I thought it was the master brake cylinder. No, that didn't fix it. Then I also replaced the ABS motor. That's been done for, oh my goodness, over a year ago. Uh, didn't make a bit of difference. Just took money out of my pocket and um, twisted my back into 14 different angles and I had to get an extra elbow installed on one arm just to do the installation. Anyway, today I am going to replace front brake calipers. Here we have a couple of rebuilt calipers. You'd think they could have sent me two that looked the same. No, this one's got a nice paint coating on it for, who knows, to look good. And this one's just uh, sandblasted and uh, painted gold. I've got a set of brake hoses, just because since I'm in there, I may as well replace the brake hoses. They could be collapsed on the inside. And I've got a set of new brake pads. I think these are, they might be the, uh, the combination ones. Uh, I don't remember what I ordered. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to put in today. So up here it's going to be a 13 millimeter socket and the bracket that fastens onto the control arm or whatever it is on the vehicle is 18 millimeters. So that's probably all of the wrenches I really need. And I've got my standard uh, super high energy brake bleeding system here so that I can do a one man bleed when I'm done. I've already got the vehicle up in the air and I've got the steering crank to the right so that means I'm going to start on the right front. I put a little bit of BB blaster or whatever on the on the parts that I need to break loose. So let's get going on this this brake job. Uh, by the way if you like what you see here in the video well give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe. I really don't need to take these two out because I'm going to replace the whole assembly, calipers and the carrier. So, oh great. Okay, don't know if you can see that. So I go to put my ratchet in there and the whole framework is in the way. Okay, let's do the bottom one. I can do that one. What a swing arm. Why not? You might be able to get this in there. Oh, look at that. Okay. Well, that was easy. Well, the bottom one feels a little tighter in the threads. Before I pop that out, I just want to push back the pistons a little bit. They're not seized on right now, and that's normal. Every time when I started it up and tried to drive it when it was cold, there's nothing wrong with the brakes. There's just enough slack, I guess, in there to back off the pistons. There we go. That's going to slide out of there. 
easily. Of course, if I was just replacing the pads, I'd have to push those pistons back quite a bit. Right now, I really don't care. I just want to get that off. I'll put the new ones on. I'm just thinking right now that possibly there might be somebody wanting to do this job and only replace the pads. So, if I remember, when I get to the other side, I will do it the hard way. I'll take out the caliper first as if I was just going to do the brake pads only. I need an extension because I just, oh, there's one right there. Nice. There, I'm not hitting the head of the ratchet. Yeah, I'm sure uh, some of you guys are going to start posting comments. Oh, I'd use my air tools. Oh, I'd have it done already. You are the slowest mechanic I've ever seen. Yeah, okay, fine. Go ahead, post your comments. If you leave comments and you got language that wasn't designed in an English classroom, you know, you're full of cuss words and ridiculous, superfluous words like that. Uh, that's when I delete your comments. Otherwise, whatever. Go ahead and go ahead and post. Okay. So. Obviously, I didn't push the pistons back far enough because it's quite tight. But then again, maybe that's the reason I'm replacing this. Okay. Once I'm in here, I'm just going to do everything. So that's what's going to come off. I I'm just not sure what I'm going to do with the brake hose yet because I don't want to I don't want to get any air in the system. So if I pop that off at the top and I don't get the new system on correctly, I may have some air going back in or if I let it drain completely too quickly then I'll have air going in at the top. So right now, I think I'm going to get up there and just check the level and see how much of a panic I'm in. So here I am up the top looking in the reservoir for the brake fluid. Um, you know what, I think I'm gonna just fill it right up because I know it's gonna go down. Okay, that didn't take much, but at least it's full. I've got a little bit of leeway before I have to panic and check. So now what I've got to do is crack this loose. I really prefer to use line wrenches when removing brake lines because it grabs more of the, the sides of the nut than a regular wrench would. You're more likely to strip it using this style, but I don't have metric. 13 millimeter, let's see how loose that is. Okay, crack loose. Um, when you're cracking loose lines, uh, it's better to give it a sharp hit than to slowly push. Slowly pushing, you're more likely to strip the surface of the of the nut, whereas a sharp hit, you're probably going to crack it loose. Spraying a little bit of penetrating fluids on there isn't a, the best idea either. I don't want that fluid going down into the, the brake system. But there, I've cracked it loose. And let's, oh, where'd my 13 go? There's a clip on there. There's the clip. Save that, put it back on. And the new brake hoses that I got 
or that I ordered, they're different left to right. So you got to make sure you get them on the correct side. Okay, there we go. I don't see any uh, brake fluid dripping out of that, so I'm actually not wasting any. Or it's not the waste that I'm worried about. It's just not running through the system yet. So that's fine. Anyway, this whole caliper assembly is off. Okay, I've got the rotor cleaned up and I'm going to start putting the, the carrier back in. So this is the first piece that's going to go down in here. It's a lot lighter working on just this. So it goes in there about like that. Now I've got some red Loctite and I'm going to put uh, a little dab on there and a little dab on here or a big dab, whatever. Okay. And then this goes in there. Goes in there. And I'm not sure if we can see what's going on, but. Okay, threads are started. Time to tighten these down. How tight is that? I don't know. 85 foot pounds? How about that? Okay. You better check the torque on that. I did check to see which brake hose was on there before, on the right front. Now, if you take a look at the shape here, there's a slightly different shape. There's a flat, a big flat surface on this side and a short flat surface here. The big flat surface goes towards the caliper to keep it from rotating. So that's the only way to tell which one goes on the right and which one goes on the left. The kit, or the hoses, came with new copper washers. Two of them. Why two? Oh, okay. Hmm. It looks like I need to take this apart to get the... this nut out of there. That nut is not, or that bolt is not just a regular bolt, it's going to be hollow, I'm pretty sure. So I just looked in the kit and when you buy the hoses they come with copper washers but when you buy the uh, whole caliper kit it comes with that hollowed out bolt that I was talking about. And, believe it or not, the um, pad kit also comes with a set of anti-rattle springs. And let's see if I can reach them. I just want to see if they're any higher quality than the ones that came with the calipers. Come on neighbor, get it done. So here's a new bolt to fasten on the brake hose, two new copper washers, that's good. Never reuse those. So these pads are different. Well, they look the same, except that this one has a wear indicator on it, and this one doesn't. And the other pair are exactly the same. So where does the wear indicator go? Does it go on the inside? Or the outside? Oh, I guess the other question is what is the wear indicator? When the brake pads get worn down, eventually this will start rubbing on the rotor. It doesn't really wear out the rotor, it just wears out your ears. Because you hear this absolute torturous screeching sound 
from one or both sides of your car and you say, oh, something's wrong. What is that? But does it really matter which side? No, it doesn't really matter which side it goes on either. I'm going to put it on the side where I can see it the most, on the top. So this is the top side. No, it isn't. This is the top side because it's got the bleeder screw. So I, I'm going to put it up there where if you take the wheels off and you look down here, you don't have to lie down on your back to take a look at anything. You can just look in there and go, ah, your anti-rattles or your wear indicator is starting to make noise. Okay. They shipped me the caliper with the pistons pushed back far enough so that everything is going to work. However, I need to install the anti-rattle springs here first. I'm trying to stall here because neighbor in his super duty lawnmower over there is just driving me nuts. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. There. So this is the way. Ow. Sliver. Sliver. Okay. Still got a sliver. Oh, that hurts. You get one of those little tiny metal slivers going into your finger. They're so small you can't see them, but boy, you can feel them. So in goes one brake shoe. A brake pad, sorry. Look at that. Those anti-rattle springs just keep that pad in there absolutely perfect. Are we seeing anything? Yeah, kind of. There we go. The side of the brakes that does the work is this side, not that side. Oh, by the way, you can see how much I've got left. Yeah. If I wasn't doing the rest of this work, I would say, yeah, I got lots of brakes. And I have looked. I, every time I get to the winter time, I got to change my tires over. And so when I lift it up, take the winter tires off and go to put the summer tires on, just like today, that's what I'm going to do as well. I take a look at the brakes and I go, yeah, they're still good. Okay, now comes the new caliper. Sitting on the carrier. Oh, gold plated. Nice. So now I'm going to install the top bolts that hold the caliper to the carrier. Nice of them to supply me with some new ones. Not that I needed it, but you know, there's always somebody who's got one that's stripped or one that broke, and then the guy's out of luck searching for the correct bolt. So if they spend a couple of extra pennies and supply you with all of these things in the kit, that's very nice. Okay, calipers on, carriers on, rotors on. And while I was waiting for Mr. Loud Lawnmower there to stop making noise, I installed the top end of the brake hose. Now I just have to install the bottom end. Here we have that bolt that is drilled out so the brake fluid can come through it. So first, a new copper washer goes on there and then it goes through the brake line and another copper washer. So here right up underneath the bottom they've got a nice little plastic plug in here. Take that out. There. Plugs out. So that's where the brake fluid goes in. This piece is going to fit right on there. Good. Looks good from the bottom. Now I'm just going to tighten that up. You don't want to over tighten it. 11, okay. Okay. 
brake line's on. I need to open up the bleeder screw. Okay, bleeder screw is 10 millimeters and it's loose. So I'm not going to leave it open because we know from the last little while of working on it there really wasn't any brake fluid dripping out of it anyway so it's going to have to be power bled in order for that to be cleaned up. I'm back together as far as I can get without bleeding the brakes so I can't put any wheels on right now. Caliper, carrier, cleaned up the rotor and let's take a look at brake lines. There we go. Let's go over to the other side now. And the other side. A generous amount of rust on all the parts. So this time, what I'm going to do on the driver's side is I'm go going to remove the caliper and I'm going to leave the carrier. Why? Because some of you may want to be seeing how to push the piston back because your only plan is to replace the pads. You're not doing a whole lot of major work. You just want to replace the pads and get your vehicle back on the road. So let's get that done. Okay, first step, I need to remove these two bolts that are holding on the caliper. Okay, that comes out easily. Nice. I'll just put that in on one or two threads. And the bottom one has the same easy removal. Okay. Those are both out. Now, I could pry that out of there. But that wouldn't be any use whatsoever because if I got that out or even tried to get it out I need to push the pistons back so I can put new thicker brake pads in. The rotor is on the extreme right of that shot and then to the left of that is the brake pad. So what I want to do is to start by getting my screwdriver between the rotor and the brake pad and I just want to kind of push away push the two apart and that will try and start forcing the pistons back into the bore of the caliper. It's not fast, it's, it's, it's slow pressure that I'm pushing with. So I think I've got it to go a little bit. I'm going to do the same in the bottom hole. Once I've got it started, it might be possible for me to get a screwdriver in between the pad and the rotor. Oh, I did get it down here. So I'm actually slowly pushing the piston back. It's only this one piston because I'm not really pushing on the bottom piston yet. I can get that in there too. Yeah. And you can see there's an awful lot of movement there now. If I take that off, come on. You think you're gonna come off or what? Ah. I don't think. I don't think you can do a brake job. Just replace the pads on this style without taking the complete carrier and caliper off as an assembly. Hmm, I don't think so. Because these anti rattle springs are in the way. Now, I don't, I'm not, well, I'm not worried about ruining these because I've got four pairs new ones. No, I don't think I can get this off. I mean, I might be able to get these off, but 
I'd never be able to get new ones in without. No, I don't think I don't think you can do that. Nope. As they say, you can't get there from here. <laughs> so here's the process. Yeah, I took this out, took these bolts out, and I backed off the pistons. But I cannot get the caliper. This I can't. I cannot get the caliper out of this assembly without taking it off the vehicle. So the next step is that I've got to remove oh, tough one. Okay. Use a swing arm there. I've got to get this. Okay. That's one loose. And the bottom one. I used the swing arm to break loose those 18 millimeter head bolts. And look at that, you can see the name of my YouTube channel. Just about out, and it is barely loose enough. Oh. One by hand. Where's that extension? inch extension and now I can kind of get at that top one there we go and we get the second one off and that means that I can take this whole assembly out of here so flip that over and take a look at it why couldn't I get that apart why did I have to take the whole thing out? Um, because it needs to pivot without the rotor in there. That's why it, it needs to pivot. Okay, whatever. So if you are doing just a brake pad job, these are the pistons that need to be pushed back. And I'm not sure whether those are back far enough yet. Um, but let's see if I can show you where I was pushing. I started by putting my screwdriver in these two holes here and just barely getting the brake pad to push back on the piston. And then later I got my screwdriver under the corner between the rotor and the brake pad and I was forcing it to go wider and wider. And that's what you need to do, is you need to push those pistons back all, all the way, really, because you're putting in brand new brake pads and it takes those pistons back right to the bottom of the bore. Now, what I'm doing up here is I'm twisting this brake hose all over the place. You don't want to do that. If you're working on just the brake pads, be very careful about the brake hose. You don't want to be damaging it, twisting it, it could, rupture later but I'm replacing mine so I'm not too worried oh I see so the only way you can get these two large pieces of casting apart is by first removing the brake pads they have to actually come out of the assembly I need a hammer There we go. Brake pad. And now, look at that. Comes out the other brake pads in there. Okay, throw that down. Rust, rust, rust. Rust. Yep, rust. Um, yeah, definitely these pistons are not pushed back in far enough. Now, if I've got it out this far, I'm going, oh, now what? Don't hit it with a hammer. You might take. Uh, huge vice grips, you might take uh, a C-clamp, put a piece of wood in here or an old brake shoe and squeeze from the outside and push those pistons back. But for me, that's going to the trash. Okay, let's crack this uh, brake line out of here. So I got my 13 millimeter and I do not have a line wrench that's metric, so I'm unfortunately gonna have to do it this way. 
Oh, it cracked loose very nicely. I was not expecting it to be that nice, but obviously no real rust up there. And I need to wash away some of that rust that cracked loose when I broke the fitting loose. Good. Okay, while that's soaking and dripping a little bit, I would like to remove the screw. Uh, let's see. Close up time. I want to remove this screw here that holds the rotor in place. So once again, I've got my clutch. A bit like an Allen wrench, but not. More like a star combo Allen wrench all in one. Beautiful. That popped loose easily. Much more easy than the other side was. And what does that mean? It means that I can take the rotor off. Isn't that nice? So why did I take the rotor off? I didn't need to do that, did I? But I just want to clean this up. I'm going to take some sandpaper and clean both sides of that. Let's finish removing this brake line. Okay, must be loose. And to remove the clip, there we go. Clips out. And I'm just about ready to put it back together. First, I need to clean the rotor. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Let's start getting this assembled again. Anti-rattle spring. And put one on here. One on there. There we go. Where's the other one? Right here. Oh great. Slightly uh, bent. There we go. It goes there. Okay, we've got two anti-rattle springs there. That side won't be rattling, that's for sure. Okay, that side's in. Now let's put the other one in. Ow! Now I know where I'm getting those slivers from. They come out of the brake pads. All little garbage they sweep off the floor and put in the brake pads. Yeah, wow, those are very small slivers. I was wondering where I was getting them from. Because of the extra paint, we've got this end that's tight and this end is just a little bit too long. And it doesn't want to sit in there. And when I look at it, and I don't have all that other stuff in the way, no, it should fit. It should just fit. Which is, they know that too. But, hey, maybe if I put it in crooked first. Oh, genius. You are almost a genius. Okay. So that pad is in there. Let's just tap that. Okay. Now, can I get the other pad in there the same way? in the correct way. Okay. Let's see. Push that tab back. Oh, that's 
super tight clearance. Oh, it looks like it's in. Now, that was awkward, but there's no way I could have done that with the caliper up here. So, but let's just try this. Let's see if I can put this together now. I don't know if I can do this. If it'll accept it or not. Okay, they have to be squished together a little bit more. And a little bit more. There's a couple of little tabs here. There they are. That are just not popping down into the piston. Into the inside the piston. Oh, there it went in. Perfect. Okay. Happy, happy Dave. Yes, that's my name, Dave. Okay, now let's put those two bolts back in again. There's a couple of new ones. Okay, rotate this around so you can see what's going on. Okay, finger tight. And finger tight. So. Now what I'm doing is I'm pushing the pistons back, or no, sorry, I'm pushing the pads back as far as I can so that it goes right up and touches the piston. Use my hammer handle here, it's a pry bar. The reason why I have to do that is because I need it to fit over the rotor. Okay, here I've got the two car carrier bolts, and I need some Loctite. Well, I bet you that's enough. Ah! I'll bet you that's enough. Okay, where can I set them while I'm trying to get this on there? I just have to hold. Okay. See if we can get some threads in there. Well, it sure would be nice if they would have cleaned the threads out. But they didn't. So. Okay. Bottom one is snug, need the extension, and the top. And the top one is snug. Okay, now we need to tighten them. I've got my reef bar here. pushing on my finger and it's got one of those little tiny pieces of metal in it from the, from the brake pad and it hurts but there's no way I'm gonna be able to see it now this is a full floating pin so that the caliper can go back and forth as the brakes wear so the the nut part of what I'm tightening here is this collar right here. 
and you can see here it's rotating so I need to find an 18 millimeter wrench oh here we go here's an 18 millimeter open end so if I put the 18 there kabang there okay good okay 10 millimeter opens up the bleeder screw there so it's just snug so what I've got in my hand here are two copper uh, washers and that's for the brake hose so one copper one goes on first and then on to the brake line and then another copper one and down under here is a plastic plug and if you want to see a little close-up view, I just want to hold before I tighten this. I just want to check see if it's the right one. Yep. Close-up view is uh, you may have to rewind the video and go find the section where I did the passenger side, and there should be some close-ups. can't see what I'm doing but I'm sure I'm doing it there we go in the right place there we go brake line okay I came back up to the top and I just wanted to see how much brake fluid was in there and of course it's full overflowing why is that that was because I pushed back the piston on the two pistons on this side quite a bit to show you how to push the pistons back and it pushed the brake fluid all the way back up the passenger side didn't cause any problem because I didn't push the pistons back it's done it's done I bled the brakes I didn't bother recording that on account of you can find lots of other videos on YouTube about uh, bleeding brakes so there it is I'm ready to go and drive it test it also swap the summer tires on at the same time thanks very much for watching uh, give me a thumbs up if you want thanks so much